What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. It's Friday, March 18th, and uh, you should be peeing green because yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. But tonight, we're going to play some Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and uh, as usual, every other Friday, uh, Matt Curie and I switch, and tonight, he gets to DM Empire of the Ghouls, so I'm going to turn it over to him. All right. Thanks, Drake. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is session 33 uh, of Empire of the Ghouls. And uh, we left off last time right in the middle of combat. You guys were traveling to cave where you uh, slaughtered some cannibals and fed them to their uh, wild boars uh, mounts that they were riding on. And uh, you recovered a magical longsword and shield belonging to a Huldra named Rangrid Iron Eyes. And uh, you are headed towards Huldramos, which is a city and uh, ruled by the Huldra. And while you were ferrying your way up the river, you got attacked by some Thirsier Giants. Uh, so that's where we are going to jump right into combat again, starting off at the top of the round with customer support bot. All right. Murder time. Stab, stab, stab. Attentive grin. Just a reminder of what these giants look like. I'm going for his weak ankles. Right there. Right down on the little. It's good right in my range. <laughs> you gotta jump off to get the kneecap. Like, wah! Yeah, but if you get one good hit on it. Yeah. Looks I like, like the, I like the man. The it's like the neighbor's dog kept him up all night. <laughs> yeah, he's like grumpy. <laughs> God damn it, you're waking me up in the middle of the night. All right, uh, so this guy has... I have some cleanser that will get rid of those bags under your eyes. And here's some witch hazel. Olive... Ole? What was it? You can even become your own consultant, and it will be half off. You also can get a pink wagon with goats pulling it. Now, this guy, uh, for anybody who's looking at him, you see him turn around and he starts yelling something in giant. You're not quite sure what. And he chucks a rock back uh, up river from where you guys are. That scarf, and that scarf looks comfortable. You hear a 
feminine cry as uh, this rock smashes into some lady on a boat up there. I don't know if you can see them or not. Yeah. Yeah. You can even hover over them and they highlight in the combat tracker. Yeah. Uh, so this one does not like these guys. And she has a javelin. Uh, Shouldn't she be the one that just got hit by the rock because of the swollen right eye? Uh, uh. <laughs> I would have. Hey, Gorby Doll, thanks for the resubscription. 15 months, I appreciate it. So she chucks a javelin. Uh, actually, no, she's going to inspire her fellow Huldra. Um, and calls them to arms, giving them advantage on their attacks. She plays a horn or something. Exactly. Let's do this. Work. The eyes all squint. Nope. Gotta drag it. One. And one more. All right, and that's her turn. Now this giant uh, does see you, and he was recently hit by one of these shield maiden so he's going to chuck a rocket one of them too uh turns around picks up this giant boulder from the the pile of rocks near his feet and uh just imagine a stick figure throwing a little rock like, yeah because he's so thin like chucks it at her and uh she manages to to get just enough out of the way that it bounces off her armor, it doesn't really hurt her any. She knocks um, it out of the way. She almost falls off the boat. Knocks it out of the way with her scarf. Yeah. And Blink. Uh, okay, so uh, Blink uh, is gonna Swimming. reach. Uh, yeah. Are, are, um, aren't I still in the boat? Actually. Uh, your boat sank. Oh, it sank. Oh, that's right. Uh, the giant jumped into it, didn't he? Yep. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Uh, well, fine. I'm swimming, and I'm going to uh, cast Shocking Grasp because uh, my intelligence is really high. And uh, I have advantage on this because uh, Quint is next to him. Quint's like, wait, wait, wait. Let me get out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> With his boots. <laughs> Add another blood drop. Nice. All right, and he cannot take reactions, uh, but uh, Blink is going to stay right there. All righty, very good. Oh, uh, and I'm just going to move uh, the cannon uh, 15 feet. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, Quince got melee weapons drawn and is going to attempt to stab this guy with a short sword. Now, Quint has been given disadvantage from Engorgio DITC. <laughs> with my main weapon, stabbing this guy with disadvantage, and I miss. Oh, I'm going to use a bonus action and stab him with another short sword. Uh, this one. Poke a hole in his hide armor. Damn it! Oh, I hit that one. Hit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some sneak attack damage. Ooh. Finish him off. Ooh, that was nice. Seventeen. Oh, they been finishing him off. And uh, and Quint's gonna move a little bit closer to uh, Blink in case he needs to get him out of the water. All right. And pass his turn. 
<laughs> oh, shit. All right, well, he gets to go because you didn't bother to kill him on I his didn't turn. Bother? Uh, he's got like <laughs> two hit points. He's he's gonna bleed to death on his turn. Almost two hit points. Not quite, but almost. I'm just. Uh, I'm... So he kind of spits in his hands and he wields up his uh, his giant war hammer that he's wielding. And the runes uh, along it all kind of flare up as he starts going after you, Quint. And he takes a swing. I try not to get hit. I like... oh, and get... duck under the water for just a second. And uh, he comes back for a back swing. And he comes back for a back swing. And this one manages to block off your armor. Um, I don't know how you get you block a giant war hammer with your, your leather armor, but it's slick now. I just slid across <laughs> my slick armor. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's that's his turn. Now this one has advantage, so she is going to take a shot at. Uh, this Thirsier Giant up here. Actually, no, it's on her turn that the boat moves. Let's see. Gorgio's given a potion of greater healing to the enemy with long arms. Enemy with long Which one's the <laughs> enemy with? Oh, long arms. Got it. Uh, can somebody apply that for me, please? Uh, yeah, I got it right here. Uh, long arms. Get some love. 11 points from Engorgio. Thank you. She's going to be here. All of them at once. <laughs> and uh, she steers the boat over to this edge as they disembark. And she hops out of the boat and scrambles up onto this rock. Uh, now she had to use her movement and action to do that, so she's going to be done. But this one, however, uh, jumps out of the boat, runs up to here, and is going to take a shot with a javelin, uh, throwing it with all her might. Now, did I describe these ladies to you before? Okay. Probably, but uh, Probably. can you do it again? Absolutely. Yeah, and slower this time. <laughs> I'll even do you one better. I'll show you a pretty picture. Uh, so the ladies in the boat you see are rather tall, very muscular, green with pointy ears. Um, they actually look kind of like Trollkin. Um, and the shield that they are wielding carries a symbol of Sif. All right, this giant. Uh, he is going to continue to press the attack against um, the unnamed, not the unnamed one. <laughs> Uh, it's been too long. Um, against Sertegas. The and, unnamed? Uh, wow. Yeah, I was going to call him the unnamed again for some reason. <laughs> uh, he initiates his uh, Warhammer runes and takes a swing once and smashes it right into the ground, right between Tegas and, uh, and Tarion, and uh, comes back and tries again, this time scoring a uh -oh. critical hit. Um, and this is not coded correctly, but I'm going to do that. As lightning arcs from his uh, uh, Warhammer, 
and does an additional two points of lightning damage to you. And you have no trouble succeeding on your concentration saves. That's impressive. All right, I don't like what he just did to my friend. I'm going to try to beat him up. <laughs> Something about sea bass. Ooh, that was uh, a lot of rolls, but one of them critted, so was that good? You, you critted on the dead one. <laughs> All right. And you really killed the dead one. Yes, the dead one is... is double oh, dead. that's why. Yeah, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Shrunken shoulder is shrunken. And then... Shoulder off, making it a little bit more shrunken. One more time. And... From the shoulder to the ankle, nearly hamstringing him. This one is going to, she's a little more violent. What happened to um, my turn? He doesn't have our turns turned on, so your turn is an illusion. Yeah, oh. you're, you're not uh, <laughs> seeing the actual order. Yeah, you think it's your turn coming up and then denied. Actually, I meant to turn that off. Let me change that. We tried it out last time, and I wasn't really not, sold on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not happy with the big surprise. It's your turn, kind of. Uh, where is that? Like, yeah, have, I, you, have you been paying attention? Because the combat tracker really is just a big blob of nothing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Show turn order friendly. Friendly. All right, so she pulls out her long sword and runs up to there. Now this guy's actually in that square, so she is going. Uh, she had to dash to get there, so she's not going to do anything. Sir Tegas, nearly dead. All right, so I'm going to um, attack this thing. Um, is it your extension that highlights them in the comment tracker? It's not one of mine, no. It's a new one that I just found earlier today and been playing with. Do you know why it doesn't work the other way? What do you mean? If you highlight them in the combat tracker, why it doesn't show them on the map? It does for the DM. Okay. I don't, I don't know why it doesn't do that for the player. That's Interesting. Maybe something that could be reported. I was just curious. Um, okay, so... Oh, I was double checking. Greater healing for Sir Tegas from Gorvidal. Woohoo! Gorvidal, you're awesome. I have it right here. I'm going to do it. Yes, because I was looking at something else. Um, oh, wow. So it says. Alright, so it's not a concentration thing at all. Alright, I'm just making sure it has it. I'll fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and use my bonus action to call upon the name of Sif. To grant me some it's the same amount of healing you gave to the giant. <laughs> no, I think it's the same way I got on the other potion too. I'm going to cast Divine Favor. So that ends your expeditious retreat. Okay, that's what it was. Now I was trying to figure out what it was. No, it's not. Um, yes. So they're both concentration. It's just retreat. Yep. I was trying to figure out what I was concentrating on. Yep, it's gone. And then I am going to attack this thing. I do have another thing. The other one that's a attack and save. That's my... Uh, it's not the blessed spell, it's uh, Channel Divinity. That is not Concentration. You 
slice into this guy. Open Sith's up his justice. gut. Leave a nice little smile across his belly. Two points of radiant. <laughs> Alright, and I'm going to... Actually, that's all I can do. Um, I'm not going to move. Um, and as I see, I'm going to get a second wind as I see the shield maidens come up over the rise. Oh. Top of the round with the Huldra. And she is going to do some stabby stabby with her long sword. She has a she... show stopping tie. Yes. It's it's beautiful. She wears it right around her armor. Quint as a the poo eater just got a random magical item. Random from magical Gorgy. item. Do you need that table? Uh no. Okay, you got it. Uh thank you. I am rolling for a potion of poo resistance. Potion of radiant resistance. That was close. Has been added to the party sheet. It's got, it's got weight. I'm just going to put on my sheet for now until we want to figure out who needs to lug it. It's actually probably okay. pretty handy for Quint to have. Yeah. Uh, she's wielding her longsword two-handed as uh, she slashes into this thing, comes back for another backhand, tries to stab it through the knee, manages to hit it, slice a big chunk out of his knee. We're back to blink. All right. Uh, I'm going to try to shock and grasp this guy again. That's a hit. It's easy to hit him in the water. <laughs> All right. oh, wow. Almost max damage. Wow. You get arcane firearm on shocking grasp? Mm-hmm. Any cool. uh uh artificer spell I cast. Mm. Uh alright. Uh I will uh swim towards shore. I, I actually I don't know if my speed is halved in the water. Yeah, it would be difficult terrain. So probably you're, you're almost over your head. At this yeah, point. yeah. Uh, I'll probably yeah just head to there and then uh, move the cannon up uh, a little bit as well, and uh, that's it. All right. This giant that you shock, he kind of teeters and totters on his feet, and he falls over, nearly drowns Quint, um, nearly shoves him completely under the water. <laughs> Quint's washed back a few feet from the wave. This one also is going to come running in to attack this guy with a, a long sword. And it takes a couple of swings. Missing. Uh, slippery on them Slips rocks. on a rock. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit too much uh, too much moss on there. It's and, a lot uh, of mist. See. Nearly falls down. She's so messed up from her slip that uh, her backswing just kind of bounces off this guy's leg. All right. Uh, this one sees everybody in there. She's going to join the party with a couple of long sword slashes. Um, she's a lot more sure footed than her friend. Uh, so she manages to do a rush and uh, pierce this guy right through the gut. Her max damage uh, comes back with another backswing, hitting this thing. These guys are just chopping these giants down. Again, almost max damage. Things still up and uh, and fighting though. All right, so gird myself and try to finish this guy off. Let's 
slice him up his thigh. You know, shift around a bit. Run around his backside. All right, I'll keep chopping away at this guy's ankles. All right, his ankles are pretty weak. You seem to be uh, badly damaging them. Uh -oh, re-roll. Uh -huh. Love, re -roll the love that. <laughs> Uh oh, his ankles are all bloody and mashed up. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be swollen tonight. <laughs> Quint's gonna uh, put away his one of his He's short swords. Soaking wet now. Yeah. This giant like, just sprayed him. He gets his wonder. boots going <laughs> in a really fast, but not really going anywhere, so he dries off a little faster. And uh, comes swooping over and wants to uh, see if he can, like, pick up, scoop up Blink a little bit and kind of help him up the hill and, like, move. move uh... You can essentially do the shove action and move him five feet. If he doesn't resist, then it's automatic. Yeah, so as I go by, I'm just going to kind of... Yeah, you would use your action to take the shove action and then... Finish your move. Oh, well, then I just pat him on the back as I go by. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you can do it as I go up the hill. Uh, can I? Can as I? you fly by him, he's like, a little help here? <laughs> he's uh, like just above your reach. Uh, can I see them up on the hill yet? How high do I need oh, yeah. to get? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can? Yeah, you can see them. Uh, I'm like, I'm like, hurry up, Blink. They're. They're up here, and uh, I'm gonna bonus action uh, dash a little further. All right. And I think I will uh, already put away a weapon, so I can't do anything else. I'm done. Try to fully encircle him, and then do uh, some more stabs. His ankles are pretty messed up, so I'm going to go right for the ACL. And you hit. <laughs> that was a juicy one. Ugh. I tried to slash somewhere that was already slashed. Passed right through the gaping wound. Right. He's like, ah, this guy, he is unhappy that he's got all of these ugly trollkin ladies attacking him. He's a skinny little bugger. Uh, so he is going to attack this lady. And with his war hammer, he uh, is no longer picking up rocks, and he's going to swing it a couple of times at her. And he is, apparently he's slippery too, because he, he lost his footing for a second there. Nearly fell down. But he tries again, this time managing to score a critical hit. Smashing into her, doing a whole ton of damage. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Axe flies up in the air and then lands on her head. Smash. Exactly, uh, and this Huldra is finally going to get into the fight as she runs up onto the rock and she grants her three uh, buddies advantage on their attacks. All right, this guy uh, sees his friend in trouble, so he's actually going to dash, run, and jump. He can make it. It's not difficult terrain for him. Uh, as he runs all the way over there, but he did have to dash, so he can't take any actions. He's pulling out his uh, war hammer as he runs. 
All right, this guy's gonna continue wailing on Sertegas. Um, he's got to be able to hit one of these days. Right. It'll trigger my sentinel. All right. And you've been hitting every every turn. <laughs> Just once, but it's enough. Yeah, that's a hit. Minor damage. Minor damage, but he does. Doesn't he get hit? Sentinel. What's that? He did get hit by the sentinel. Sentinel. Uh, he swings once and twice. Almost a crit as the die rolls off the 20. Um, as he smashes Sertegas again. But he doesn't lose concentration. And top of the round, you get your revenge. <laughs> All right. He's got one hit point. He's like, ah. These giants hit hard when they hit. It's those big axes they got. It's like runic warhammers that do lightning damage in addition. Yeah, you drop a refrigerator on someone, it hurts. And then plug it in. Got to be a lumberjack and chop them down to size. All right. Let's try this again. Finally, make it through the sinew. So focused on Sertegas, and your glaive just kind of slashes right through his neck. I'm going to try to crossbow bolt that guy with my other attack. So what are you doing with your glaive? You just drop it as you I'm run? stabbing it first, like right into the dirt. <laughs> I don't respect my weapons. <laughs> All right. You hit this guy in the back while he's facing these three ladies, four ladies. I also don't respect my enemies. Gonna run down to here and start wailing on this guy with her long sword, wielding it two handed, scoring a critical hit, <laughs> slashing hard into this guy, and again, this one missing just by a lot as he, she rolls a two. Uh, I was just checking uh, distances here. Um, I think Blink is just going to start running. Uh, and it's going to take him a while to get anywhere useful. But uh, he will eventually get there. Uh, so, there we go. Jump on Quint's back while you're running up here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as I pass by the cannon, I kick it. And I say, stupid slow cannon. Uh, and Don't you pick it up and carry it with you? Well, my hands are full. I guess I could put my uh, put my wand away and grab it. So, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll put my wand away and uh, pick up the cannon. All right. Uh, so I, can come with me. I always picture that thing bigger than you are. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, if Blink's not very big. Uh, and I'll, I'll give some temporary hit points to me and Quint since we're both right there. <laughs> Come on, more than eight. All right. This is going to continue trying to chop this giant down. It's a long ass process because there's got so many hit points. Chopping away, chopping away. Uh, again, missing with a two, but uh, got it down to four blood drops. Um, hmm. 
I think Quint's going to uh, do some longbow action on this guy right here. Unusually thin, I think he's going to get a longbow in the back. Uh, what's my range? 150, so I will have disadvantage. Yep. Not automatically, though, right? You're not using that extension. No, I'm not using okay. the automatic extension. Uh, twang! <laughs> disadvantage, it's like a giant target. It's like trying to hit the <laughs> side of a barn. <laughs> so I get him in the back of the knee for... Ooh, 11 points of damage. It's 11 again. What the hell? It's the 11 extension. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to start uh, moving uh, this direction, too. Uh, I will also bonus action. Uh, actually, I think I'm just going to stay over there. Stay with, Qu uh, with, uh, with Blink and the cannon, kind of. Pass my okay. turn. All right, I'm going to just take off running and. Is that your uh, movement? That's all. Oh, I was I was messing around to see how far away things are. That's what that was. So I'll just move there. That'll be my movement plus action of all right. sprinting. Oh. Dash over to that set of bushes over there. As this giant now has closer targets. And begins smashing away with his Warhammer. Hitting her. Doing a bunch of damage. Smashes kind of onto her helmet. I think pushes her helmet further down onto her head, bruising her nose a little bit more. <laughs> and this time critically hits her in the jaw. Nearly breaks her jaw. She's going to have trouble talking after this. She's not only does she have the wounded nose, but... Yeah, now she can't talk. Uh, so this guy, oh, this is the Holder Shield Maiden. All right, she is going to uh, continue with this bloody giant. Couple of swings there. The first one misses, but the back swing does connect for minimal damage as she slips a little bit, a little distracted with this giant war hammer that just smashed her in the face. She was also flexing her abs at the inappropriate time. I'm ripped. Yeah. And this one whips off her comfortable looking scarf to uh, to distract her opponent. <laughs> Flashes around the air. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work because his armor blocks the scarf. And uh, she's so discombobulated because she had her scarf in her hand and not her longsword. Um, she misses that as well. Tried to scarf this him. giant, however, sees that this one lady um, is much more injured than the other. So he brings his warhammer onto her, smashes a couple of times, hitting 14 points of damage while she's nearly dead, and coming up with another backswing, hitting her. And <laughs> caving in her skull as she falls to the ground. And uh, that giant lets out a, uh, a roar uh, sounding extremely happy. They managed to kill one. Come on, Blink, hurry up, up the hill, up, 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 up. Yeah, I'm going. All right. Uh... Because One time, I, I wish I had actually prepared tireless. Carrying this cannon over his head. For some reason, I imagine his feet look like the Marvin the Martian. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, I'll just double move up to there, and uh, the, the 
I'm carrying the cannon, so it's yep. coming with me. And uh, that's it. All right. Comfortable looking scarf is very pissed because her friend just got killed. So she goes after this guy with his longsword, drops the scarf, manages to kill it, and then takes a step down and begins wailing on this last one. And she hits that one as well. For almost max damage, 11 points of damage. Wounding this guy nicely. All right. Is it an action to pull my javelin out of the dirt? No. Or I mean, my, sorry, not my javelin. Glaive. If it's right. next to you, no. All right, I'm going to grab it, and that cliff face is totally unclimbable, or possibly which, climbable. Which cliff face? Oh, yeah, you, you can scramble down it. It's not terribly steep. It's kind of oh, like an eroded ravine. Okay, so are we a, we're on the higher side? You're, you're on the higher side, yes. Okay. And then this is kind of a, a gouged crack ravine. And so when you if you go down there, it'll go down and then up, and it'll be difficult terrain to kind of go through that, but easy enough. It looks like Tarion's heading around it. Yeah, Tarion's taking the long way around. <laughs> I'm not that complicated. All right, I'm going to run straight at it like an idiot. I, I figured I could, it was too short to reach any handholds and climb, you know. <laughs> you to, if you had the movement, you could try to jump it. See, his spot's probably going to try to do a pole vault. So you scramble down there. You slide a little bit the last five feet because uh, the ground disappeared underneath you. Yeah, I was going to do full, like, uh, cannonball roll right down it. Like, kind of kind of do the Super Metroid ball move. Get right <laughs> to the bottom. <laughs> All right, that was a dash, so you can't do much else. It's the roly poly move. And come over here and continue pressing the attack missing with her first swing missing again with her second swing there's tears running down her eyes as her friends dead making her miss these attacks quint well quint is going to uh Bonus action and move 60 feet. Closing the distance in to short range on his longbow on this All guy. Right. Firing an arrow off, sinking it in, and Boing. getting some sneak attack. 22 points. That's 11 twice. Holy crap. And uh, it's going to pass his turn. Very nice. He's now got an arrow sticking out of his right ear. All right, so I'm going to slowly limp my way over. 30, uh, I'm going my... There's a blood trail behind you, maybe an organ or three. And then I'm going to uh, uh, try to decide if I should do one or the other. So I'm going to, I see this sister fall, uh, and I'm trying to get over to her in time. Um, so I'm going to cast a Cure Wounds second level on myself. All right, I was going to try to throw a javelin at that guy, but I think there's too many people in the way. Uh, so, so I'm just going to try and run. If I kind of go over the smaller area, oh, let's see, that would end me right there. So how about I just go there? Okay. What is the ludicrous range Oops. of a javelin? 3120. 
120. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah, pretty she, ridiculous she, to actually, expect that I can do that. <laughs> uh, should take the sharpshooter feet, then you then you then you're yeah. not a disadvantage. I want to see that build now. Olympic decathlon. <laughs> right. Yeah, Olympian. <laughs> All right, this Holdra maiden looks up at this guy with uh, with her swollen right eye and calls out to her fellow uh, Holdra, and she says, no survivors. These giants have, uh, have caused enough trouble. Let's end it right now. As she slices into him once and misses with a slurp. <laughs> Let's end it right now, she says, slipping on the rocks and totally eating shit. Yep. Uh, and this one's going to go after the wounded one. He, they managed to kill one. He knows he's not going to escape if he runs, so he's going to go down swinging. Oop, did he have more targeting? Which one did he? He missed the comfortable scarf one. He was still targeting the dead one. And he's going to attack again with his Warhammer. And he also rolls on Slippery Rocks. Slippery Rocks covered in blood. There's mist. Uh-oh. Look who got initiative. Well, here comes another arrow your way, buddy. Twang. Twang. Aw. Did I hit you in the same spot? 19 points of damage. Whap. You split the first arrow that was sticking out of his ear. It was and, right uh, into the same hole. I, don't, I think Quint's going to uh, also move 60 feet out this direction. Just staying above... Uh, the water, you know, the water, uh, five mm -hmm. or ten feet up. Okay. With ah, his boots, giant gets boots. To go again. Trying to kill enough of these things to be able to run away, because he doesn't think he's going to survive if he sticks around. Smashes once and twice. But he doesn't manage to drop her. Blink. <laughs> All right. Blink uh, will run up to there. Um, and then uh, I assume there's just like little rocks everywhere, right? In this yeah, area? Yeah, yeah plenty. All right, uh, I will set... Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll set the cannon down and uh, pull out my wand, and uh, I'm going to uh, cast Catapult on one of these uh, rocks and uh, have it f shoot at the uh, at the giant. Very nice. Yeah, there's uh, a ton of rocks all over there. Let's see. He's got to make a deck save, and I swear I have him targeted. Oh, it's uh, I have the cannon selected. Let me try that again. Sorry. Okay. There we go. One twenty-five. He fails his deck save. Nice. All right. Uh, add that to it. So he is going to take some damage from that. It's not bad. All right, as this rock comes flying and smashes into him, you didn't even see it coming because he's paying attention to these ladies. <laughs> uh, move the cannon a little bit, and then uh, I'm done. All right, as this one takes a swipe. Ooh, just off the three hits. Max damage. <sighs> Cutting this thing kind of right in his uh, Achilles tendon, and he slips and falls back into the water. 
and goes over the falls as they are dead. <laughs> Level up! Oh, wait. No. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right. Now these three look over at you warily, and uh, they don't put their weapons away. And uh, look at you and say, "Well, who are you?" No, uh, we have a Scythian with us too. He's he's back there. A Sith Lord. Well, uh, he, he worships your god. I'm more of a Rava person myself. We but... are yeah. the hand of Rava. An adventuring group of sorts. Who is Rava? Whoa. All right. I'm going to okay. print up some pamphlets. Error. Just give me a moment here. Error. Does anybody have toner on them? I turned off token lock. <laughs> Are you kidding? Someone we don't have enough money to afford toner. Running. Um, jumping down. A little parkour. Across. Coming back up. Gonna... I'm going to see if I can... Uh, get to this downed one in time to uh, lay on hands. All right, you get to her, um, and uh, you notice that her wounds have started to close. Right, she's trollkin, but is she breathing? Yeah, she's breathing. Okay, awesome. Fire damage. <laughs> so I would... Um, A little... Sven doesn't know it, but Sertegas would know some sort of greeting, um, traditional saying that the Sif warriors have, something along those lines. And I will, once I make sure that she's alive, I will stand up and greet the sisters as you would greet each other. I am Sertegas, Blade of Sif, formerly the unknown, the unnamed. <laughs> Formerly the unnamed. <laughs> you uh, the, unknown, your own uh, name. <laughs> the unknown and unnamed. Right. The unknown unnamed. Yes. Your assistance is appreciated. Uh, we have felled four of them as well. And I'll point out the corpses. You have done well. You are strangers to our land. What what brings you here? On the the river to Holdramos. We are returning a sword and shield. It, it, to anyone in particular? Did you borrow it? We found it in a cannibal cave. Uh, presumably the owner was eaten. Sorry about my bedside manner. <laughs> Dwarven cannibals? Yeah, reavers. You know, tiny guys she have, have pigs. On the ground. She starts swearing uh, very colorfully about dwarves. She doesn't seem to like dwarves at all. There's a bunch of dead ones back that way. Going to point. The only good dwarf uh, is a dead dwarf. Well, there's a gr lot of great dwarves back there, then. <laughs> uh, I think this, uh, this the sword and shield we have uh, belonged to someone named uh, Rangrid Iron Eyes. Do you know that name? Yes. Yes. You have recovered Rangrid's belongings? Did you find her? No, just the belongings. Yeah, we didn't check the outhouse. Uh, bedside manner again. Oh, sorry. Um... <laughs> that is good news. That is uh, sad news that uh, you were not able to recover her, but uh, that you were able to, to bring her her belongings. I assume then you are traveling to Huldramos to return them? That was the plan, yeah. Excellent. We are not far. Um, a few hours should get us there. Uh, we will accompany you. We've, uh, we've been bothered by these particular group of uh, giants for some time, so we appreciate your assistance in ridding the region of them. All right, you're welcome. Would, would you like some temporary hit points? I could shoot you with some uh, cobalt uh, medicine. We'll be fine after a few minutes rest. Just your loss. Just and he like takes a little out of the cannon and eats it. 
Is the calendar correct that it is just after 10 in the morning? Uh, no, the, the time on the calendar is not correct. Um, you, you've been traveling. This is the second day of travel. It was going to be two full days of travel. And so it'd be closer to like four in the evening. You've got a couple more hours left before you reach Holdramos. And then I'm going to lay on hands. All right. As they will escort you uh, on the way to Holdramos. Can I have some of that too? I don't need healing. I just think it looks nice. Somewhere yeah, I'll there. lay on hands and bless him with uh, the benediction. Give him funerary rites. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, the the Huldra uh, will agree to escort you on the way to Huldra Mose. Um, is there anything you want to ask them while you are traveling? They're obviously Trollkin. Um, and uh, so, being from this area, um, what I know are there a lot of Trollkin tribes? Uh, are Trollkin common around here? There are. Um, the Huldra shield maidens are made up primarily of Trollkin and their descendants of ancient Valkyries that have settled into this area. And they are well known for uh, heavily patrolling the region. And uh, they tend to keep the place mostly safe. Their biggest enemies are dwarves, the Reaver dwarves who invade their kingdoms. So they, they don't like dwarves very much at all. Good thing I haven't oh. grown a beard. They might mistake me for one. So I'll pass the time, uh, ask them if they know of the area where I'm from, the town across the, the river there. Um, see if they've ever traveled to the temple there. Talk about the priestess who was there before, that type of thing. Um, none of them have had the pleasure. They've been, uh, they're primarily warriors. They don't travel around a lot. They have heard of the place, um, the uh, Scald Haven, I think I believe it was, and uh, which is kind of just across a little waterway called the Sweeve. Um, but they don't. Uh, they're not. They're not familiar with those people at all. There, uh, maybe somebody in the town will in Holdramos, but uh, these these guards spend their time primarily patrolling the region and uh, killing dwarves whenever possible. So should, we after... ask... oh, should we ask him about the uh, the Midnight Temple? Probably. They look at you confused. What? It's it's only four o'clock. You need a temple at midnight. No, it's <laughs> just a place I I heard about. It has uh, really good empanadas. Uh, ah, so, uh, never heard of it. Yeah. What's an empanada? I don't know. That's why I want one. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, uh, they will escort you. And it takes a few hours. But with them escorting you, they all heal up um, as you're walking. It literally only takes them a few minutes. And they're all back to uh, full health. And as you approach Holdramos, let me give you a little bit of info about it. The, the region around Holdramos is right near the river. And it's very marshy um, so as you walk into the town you see a lot of these long houses that are built in this marshy area they're all kind of up on stilts um, and uh, there's there's a whole bunch of buildings kind of all over the place there's one really large one which is where these uh, Huldra are escorting you to looks kind of like this 
And uh, you'd estimate based on the number of buildings in, in the area that there's probably uh, somewhere on the order of 5,000, maybe 6,000 people uh, gathered together in this area. Um, looking around, you see a, you know people engaged in various uh, uh, occupations. There's, there's fishermen who have been working on the river and uh, some construction workers and, and people who are preparing mead and, and hunt, collecting honey and whatnot. And there's just a variety of different uh, people going about their business. Um, and uh, most of what you see are trollkin. You do see some humans and uh, there's a smaller number, maybe maybe a fifth or a, or a sixth um, are, you would think they're elf marked and a very small number of shadow fae live here as well. Shadow fae? Yeah, there are a few. There's only about Shifty buggers. The Surprised they're not killed on site. Right. Quite and uh, the ears perk up. You you might see one in passing. There's 50 out of a town of 5,500, so you may see one here or there um, over the next few days. Uh, as you uh, come into town, um, they escort you to that giant hall. And they tell you that the uh, the two queens uh, rule in the hall, although there is only currently one queen there. Um, and uh, many of the Holdra are there. They're kind of relaxing there, and they're watching you very carefully. Um, as you walk into the hall at the end of the aisle, on a raised platform, there are two carved wooden thrones. The one on the right is carved out of dark bog oak and adorned with ravens. And it's empty, nobody's, nobody's sitting on that one. The one on the left is carved of white ash and adorned with swans. Uh, sitting on the throne is a statuesque elf marked woman. And she's wearing a gown of moss green trimmed with silver thread. Her long hair is so blonde as to be nearly white pulled into a braid that spills over one shoulder. A thin white scar divides the right side of her face. The angle of the strike that left it spared her eye, though the scar pulls down the corner somewhat, making her look sleepy. A spear of ashwood with a bright polished head of silver steel leans against the side of the throne. She leans forward and kind of has a a little bit of a bored gaze looks at you all and says who are you and why are you brought here so i'll step forward and again give the appropriate greeting um, and bow or whatever is appropriate for this area uh, and say i am sir tegas blade of Sif." formerly the unnamed we are here to return this shield and sword to the hologram twins or whatever the actual name is iron eyes yes you are welcome you are welcome please tell us the tale how you came by this shield and sword we met your warriors, uh, depriving them of the honor of destroying four of the hill giants, or the, the, or the hog, I forget what they're called, the hogren? Thusir. Thusir, the Thusir giants. Um, but we had made our way from the coast where we had destroyed the, a clan of reavers and have, that is where we found these equipment. Ah, uh, Rangrid had been tracking her and her crew, had been tracking some reavers. She may have uh, fallen prey to, to them. This is sad news indeed. But we are thankful. We are grateful. Um, 
Everybody give me a insight check, please. She has this really bored expression on her face. All right, um, Quint, um, you can tell she's looking bored, but there's something about her that that gives you the hint. It's just this sense that she's actually really excited to see you, but she's trying to hide it really well. Um, nobody else seems to pick up on it, but you do. Um, Quint uh, kind of step out from the shadows, you know, where he usually is hanging out. He'll pull down his uh, his hood, and he'll say, "My lady," and he'll introduce himself as the Quint, the son of his parents, uh, whatever their names were, <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> as the. Uh, sh uh, representatives of the shadow queen or the shadow fae ah we do not have many shadow fae here you are welcome as well there are a small number around town if you wish to meet with some of your brethren what brings you to the land of the far north we are uh, on a mission to uh... What's the name of the town? Halder, 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 Haldersmus? You're at Haldermos right now. What we, what we are stopping a wedding of sorts. A wedding? Hmm. Are you getting married? Uh, somebody is attempting to get married. Somebody evil. Evil? Please, do tell me more. The safety of our land is foremost in my mind. So if there is any, oper any chance that evil will arise, I wish to know about it. Hmm. Perhaps an audience would be best. An audience? In we private. can do that. We may meet. My Huldra are welcome to know. Is what you have to say so sensitive that it must be kept from the warriors who will be defending our land? Hmm. There are many spies about. I am always Not in cautious. Huldra. Not here. I appreciate your caution. And I understand that in the dishonest lands to the south, there are many who attempt to deceive. But here in Haldramos, and she pounds her hand on the, on the throne. We Shame. do not suffer those fools lightly. People who are found to be deceptive are strung up on poles and killed. This is a harsh land. And justice is harsh here. So say what you will. Ragnarok. She looks at you and her eyes just go wide. You speak of Ragnarok? Oh, it's my safe word, unrelated. Um, <laughs> Are you actually saying that? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to bring up Ragnarok because that was, I think, brought up in regards to the blood wedding. It's in my notes under open support tickets, so. <laughs> what do you know of Ragnarok? Uh, I know that uh, divinations have been warning of the great evil stirring, um, and some of the uh, prophets and seers uh, pointed us north um, beyond the, the Nieder Strait. So that's kind of why we're here. It's, it all started at the Reaver's Cave. If we're trying to stop this blood wedding so that you know the world doesn't end i'm less concerned about it because i'm not made of meat like the rest of you but apparently all the meat people are super upset about the blood wedding so what is this blood wedding 
What can you tell me? I think it was fish or steak were the options. You get a plus one. I don't know. Does somebody else know more about this? One? Well, yeah, I don't have it in my notes, so uh, I'm trying to remember. Remember, in Reaver's mm -hmm. Cave, we you recovered school. an invitation mm -hmm. to the Blood Wedding. So you have the invitation written on human skin. Yeah, that's why I knew it was like fish or steak. Um, <laughs> uh, let me see. Do it, Which one of us has actually has the actual invitation right now? Does the party sheet have it? Our best friend? Nope. Northern Hero Saga. Tra uh, or Quinn usually carries some of that stuff around, but I don't... I, don't... I have what... a note. Yeah, it's called oh. Invitation to Blood Wedding in Blink's Inventory. Yeah, I right. thought I might have it. I couldn't remember. Oh, there it is. I found it. Now. He's like, I Each one of us open up our bags of holding and make giant piles on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Start dumping everything out on the floor. Well, Blink is very unorganized anyway, so he's just like going through stuff and pulling out random junk and like, you know, there's a bag of skin that he pulls out and eventually he gets to it and, you know, hands it to her to read. Skull covered in muck. <laughs> so she she takes a look at it and Says so this is uh, this is disturbing, but we must put this off for at least a short time. Uh, tomorrow we honor Rangrid. We thank you for bringing back her sword and shield, and tomorrow we will present it um, after the feast to honor Rangrid. You are free to stay with us uh, a, a home will be prepared for you rooms will be prepared where you can rest and clean yourselves if you uh, have interest you feel free to move around the town and visit our people speak with whoever you would like to um, she points to a pair of shield maidens uh, these two ladies will escort you wherever you go. And then she dismisses you. Uh, so give us uh, kind of the description of the town. Yeah, so this is kind of a, imagine a Norse Viking town. It's a lot of those long houses like that image I shared with you. Uh, look kind of like that. Um, and uh, it's just kind of a bustling town. There's warriors. You see Trollkin walking, wandering all over the place. Um, and there are, let's see if there's anything else specific. It's a, I mean, it's a general town. You can get, it, there's shops. You can buy stuff like if you, anything from the player's handbook um, you can get here. You won't be able to find any magical items here. But uh, it's, it's a, a pretty typical northern Norse town with very marshy ground. Do they have any temples? Um, not that you see. You don't see anything that stands out as a temple of Sif. Um, and from what you know uh, of the Huldramos, they demonstrate their worship through warfare. Um, and for them, it's all about living and dying an honorable death and taking out as many enemies of Sif um, as they can. Uh, the Reaver Dwarves in particular, they are a very warlike people. You see fights break out all the time, but since they're Trollkin, no nobody ever actually gets badly injured because they just heal up and when they walk away. So I will offer... Before we leave, I'll offer, I'll talk to the queen and tell her I'll, I can offer my services as cleric to the warrior goddess, um, and I can I will prepare ceremony for the next day, the spell ceremony, and I'll have that ready. That would be much appreciated. You. You may 
and she points to one of the other shield maidens. You may attend to the women's quarters. The only thing I want to do is I want to uh, spar with uh, at least one, if not two, of the warriors that evening and then before we go to bed. Sure. Um, her invitation was that you would uh, spend the evening in the women's quarters. And remember, the women are the warriors in this society. Um, she was granting you honor as a, as a warrior of Sif by joining their warrior women. The rest of you are all excluded from that. Quinsley. Yeah, Blink's used is, to that kind of treatment. Excuse me, is there a shadow face side of town around anywhere? It's like dark Not country. really a side of town, but uh, there are there are a few if you want to try and find some. Yeah. The row of outhouses, and then the latrines, and then the burial crypts, and then Chetafo. Past the compost heap, right on the right back there. Yeah, I see it. There it is. Do you have any buildings that have a rat problem? I'd love to help <laughs> out with that. Come on, Quint. <laughs> or come on, come with Quint. Uh, Blink. Uh, I'm sure there's a rat problem out here by these latrines. <laughs> and uh, Blink and Quint, um, could you give me an Arcana check in the tower, please? Uh, I'm not very familiar with this kind of stuff going on. Yeah, your two really sells that. <laughs> I knew it was going to be crap. <laughs> However, Blink, um, you get a very odd sense in town. Um, you, you get this weird sense that something isn't what it seems. So something is not right, but you can't pinpoint it. It, it seems to permeate the entire town. Um, this weird magical sense of something is is hidden. Yeah, I don't have uh, detect magic prepared either, so I can't cast it. Uh, I will um, prepare that though for tomorrow, so that I can cast it tomorrow and see if I can pick up any more. But uh, I will. Uh, I'll tell Quint about it. Good okay. Sake. Hmm. Does it does it feel to have anything to do with the with the shadow realm? You're not sure. There, there's an odd sensation um, that you you have, and the only time you've ever really felt it before was that instant of passage between the normal realm to the shadow realm. That, that very brief sensation of passing through the planes. But you're not in any kind of plane or gate. You're not, you know, traveling the shadow roads or anything like that. Uh, Blink suddenly remembers that uh, he has all of these wands that he keeps forgetting about. Um, and one of them is a <laughs> wand of detect magic. Uh, and so he is going to use that and cast detect magic. Okay. Um he uses that and uh, cast the. That was loud. <laughs> uh, he, yeah, he goes ahead and casts detect magic, and most of the city you see is, is relatively mundane. There's a few things in uh, in the Queen's Hall, um, if you're looking in there, uh, that that glow is magical. But uh, what's the range on that? 30 feet. feet okay yeah um yeah as you wander around you don't really see a whole lot um just a few items when you're in the uh the queen's hall but uh but that's all and the uh the holder that are with you they kind of escort you around and point you to different areas of town if you want to see a you know look at a particular location but uh other than that you don't you don't sense any magic Hmm. I'll ask them. Uh, is there anywhere uh, we should know where we, sh you know, know of that we shouldn't go? Like, do you guys have like a forbidden zone or something that no one's allowed? Just so we know to avoid it. Um. They say don't don't worry about that. We will accompany you uh, everywhere you you may travel. We'll let you know if you you happen to go anywhere where you shouldn't be. 
All right. Hey, uh, where's the other queen, by the way? I, I'm asking them. Yeah. The other queen, she says, uh, the queen that is here, you met uh, Thorgard. Our other queen is Dark Erpa. And she is currently off. We are not sure where. She's off on an adventure. And yes, I didn't make up that name. That's from the module. Dark <laughs> Erpa. I-R-P-A. Um, she is a, a... She describes her as a, a powerful sorcerer uh, who is currently away um, making it Thorgard's turn to rule in her absence. The two queens take turns when, when they need to travel. So it's a line of succession after you. Uh, if the two queens are deposed, then the Huldra would hold an election to uh, to determine who would take over. Which probably means a fist fight. Awesome. Yes. Or, you know, there are other elf mark, there are magic users and stuff in town. Um, the Both queens are supposedly powerful magic users. Uh, is what language is being spoken? They pretty much all speak the northern tongue. So I, I imagine Sir Tegas is translating for you everywhere you go. Well, no, uh, Quint would put on his helm of comprehending languages. Then. Oh, yeah, you, you'd understand it. No problem then. I mean, he hasn't. Yeah, they're uh, all speaking what, what does tongue. the image look like? <laughs> I can't see it. Of, uh, oh, I just uh, want to see what he looks like wearing the thing. It looks like this. <laughs> I am Batman. Very subtle. Yeah. <laughs> he puts his cloak over the top of himself. I'm the Rocket Man. Flying around. The, rea out. the real hard part is stuffing your pointy ears into the helmet's little pointy ears. Yeah. You reach your hand up inside to try and poke it. I just kind of misty step into it. There you go. <laughs> So Quint's got this on, and he's gonna go check out the uh, the Shadow Fay. He's gonna. Okay, you wanna try to make some Shadow Fay contacts in town? Yeah, you know he's a Krakovian rebel. He's got uh, all that rebel kind of slang. Mm-hmm. Uh, none of the Shadow Fay here uh, really know much of anything about Krakova. Um, they they it's a faraway country full of weak southerners um and it's far too warm do they know of any shadow roads nearby um shadow roads that maybe make our travel faster see i don't think so Uh, okay. None of them are aware of any. Yeah, none of them are aware of any uh, shadow roads, and, not uh, near Huldramos. There, there is one up near Wotan's tree, but that's about a hundred and fifty miles and a northeast of here. So, Quint to make a. A, a mental note of, of that location and uh, he'll also ask uh, what, 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 what something feels off in this town like with arcana or magic or something is what 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 is is that a is it just me that has that feeling um so give me a persuasion check uh All right, very good. Um, so after you know talking with a few of them and exchanging a few coins and having a drink and whatnot, um, a couple of them tell you that uh, pretty much all of the Shadow Fae there 
have that same sense. And it started, when did it start? It started recently. Um, they, they're not more specific than that, but relatively recently in the last few years. Um, and it's around the, the entire region for, for several miles. Um, there's this weird sense, um, but none of them know what it is. It, it, they all describe it the same way I described it to you, this that feeling of when you pass through into the shadow realm or, or pass from one plane to another. Or reach into an extra dimensional bag kind of feeling. Yeah, except it's a wash of your whole body. Yeah. It's like, and how far does this extend out, roughly? Um, for about two to three miles from from the town of Holdermos. It's quite quite a wide area. And how long did they say it's been going on? They're not real specific. It kind of just slowly, gradually kind of built up to the level it's at now. But it's been months, if not a year or more. That it's been slowly growing in strength. Several seasons have passed since. Yes. And uh, and Quint's just gonna spend the rest of the evening just trying to gather rumors and and that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, Where are we me... staying? Uh, they have one of the houses, one of those long houses. That they're giving to you to, for the evening. Except for uh, uh, Sertegas. He gets to sleep with the women. A bunch and, of uh, and warriors. Does it, does it feel this town has some coinage? Like we could sell some of these furs? I think it would be a good place Absolutely. to... Absolutely. This would be a great place to... Uh, to sell the furs. Yeah, I think Quint's like, uh, these these have set up enough. He pulls them out of the bag of holding. The and furs you'll uh, get full price for. Here. And I put the uh, I put the uh, oh you took them out of there okay, and the yep. silver trade bars. Uh, yep, you can uh, definitely sell those here as well. They're worth five gold or each. I guess. Yeah, any kind of art objects you want to sell, um, anything like that, go ahead and throw it in the party sheet, and I'll sell it for 100. And then any kind of normal equipment you may want to Oops. sell, I'll, I'll do the 50. Got to hold the shift. Uh, I'm going to replenish my javelin and hand axe supply at the shops, and then I'm going to work on my new tattoo of me uh, taking out uh, Giant's Achilles tendon. <laughs> nice. Maybe pay somebody to do that really big on my back. <laughs> Got 20 pounds of furs. If I want to sell stuff too, do I throw it in there too? Because it's kind of party. It was bag of holding. Yeah, when, just throw everything in the part, uh, party sheet, and then I'll sell it all and distribute it all. You don't want the saga of Hjalmar? Ugh, I read it already. It's a little overwrought. A little derivative. Too many thousand those and thems. Right, I think well, we cleaned up be... not too long ago. Our, yeah, our it shouldn't... hasn't been too long. Uh, any equipment um, take out? Because I'm going to sell the stuff that's in there. Uh, any, you know, art or valuables at 100%. And then equipment, I'll sell at 50%. So is that all, everything for 100%? Yeah. Going once, going twice, sold. All right, any other equipment? Wow, 910 gold. Nice. 
I accidentally typed in 500% for sale price. That's okay. <laughs> I'm fine with it. I got eight Anything pounds else? of coins on me. <laughs> About to have more. Yeah, I, I don't know if we can carry that much. So. <laughs> Well, Clint does have a bag of holding, but... All right, I'm going to distribute to the party. 189 gold apiece. And this is a good spot for our 10-minute break. 10-minute break. And we'll break. come back in the morning with the memorial feast for Rangrid Iron Eyes. Are they going to have barbecue? Another meal of me staring awkwardly at people chewing food. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a 10-minute break. Uh, some of us have got to use the facilities and get uh, refreshments. So I am going to put on the slideshow and start some pretzel music for you guys. I'm going to start a countdown uh, and do uh, some pretzel right there. And slideshow. All right, we'll be back in 10 minutes. See ya. You guys come back. Hurry back.
We're back. We're back. Oh, wait, I'm not. Yeah, we're back. All righty. Uh, so <clears throat> you guys go ahead and spend the night there. You have a lovely sleep through the evening. Uh, very restful. It's actually surprisingly comfortable inside these longhouses. Um, the smoke that uh, issues forth from the fires that are inside keeps all of the bugs away from nesting in the uh, the roofing material. And uh, it, it actually is... They have uh, uh, good-smelling woods that they use to, to keep the inside smelling quite nice um, that burn. The next day, as uh, as you guys wake up, the same two Huldra that were escorting you all around uh, continue to escort you throughout the day. Um, as you get out into town, you notice that the whole town seems to be in a lot of activity. Everybody's kind of running around, um, busy, busy, busy. Uh, you see a couple of large fire pits, and there's huge oxen that are freshly slaughtered and are roasting over these fire pits. Uh, you see a bunch of hunters going out and overhear them talking about going out and getting wild birds and game um, to provide additional meat for the, the feast later today. Um, in another part of the town, there's a, a wagon starts pulling through and it's got these giant barrels of mead that they're hauling over to the, the great hall uh, it looks like they're preparing for a, a really nice party. Um, however, in one section of it, um, I think this is the section that Blink was exploring, uh, th there's this really foul-smelling odor coming from some Trollkin ladies that are preparing some really, really stinky brews in these large cauldrons. Um, and uh, they're being set there, and this just reeks and uh they're starting to simmer it's liverwurst and... ipa yes <laughs> and uh right next to them are piles of cages and uh, you can see that in all of the cages are these venomous snakes they're just stacked up in a wall right near where these uh these things are and uh, every cage is just stuffed full of these venomous snakes Everyone seems excited. Everybody's happy, but very busy. What do you want to do? I am so, so bored, and I feel so alien, and none of this means anything to me. So wherever there's the least dwarves, I'm going to go and hang out. Or not dwarves, the least people. You all look the same. You meet piles. <laughs> I'm being very angsty today. So. Like, Quinn wants to go check out these snakes. He's he's interested in why they have yeah, it, all these snakes. It kind of smells like kobold cooking. So, kind uh, of, like, except there's a little more acrid odor to it. It kind of burns the back of your nose more than than mom's home cooking. Um, so you want to ask some of them about the snakes? Yeah, Quinn's like. What? Is this a delicacy? Why do you have so many snakes here? And uh, the lady you're talking to, the, the Trollkin lady who's who's working with them, uh, kind of turns to one of the others and, and laughs a little bit and says, Ha! Those, those are for later today. We get, we get to eat them alive during the feast. That's rather large snake in there. <laughs> Quint's looking in the, in the cage, right? I mean, these are like big snakes, right? Like they're, they're venomous snakes. They're not huge in size, but you know that these are all very deadly. And the, you're going to eat them alive? Uh, oh, yes. It is a wonderful thing for the feast. You will join us. Yes, you will, you will join us. I'll save a big one for you. So do can they I, bite you when you eat it? Can I? Oh, you'll see. You'll see. It's so much fun. Can I pick they're mine wonderful. out now? I Quinn's like looking for a little one. <laughs> can i have this one over here <laughs> the, the littlest ones have the most venom yes yes they're if potent does it make me <laughs> fall unconscious if i get bitten uh, some people will fall unconscious yes then, yes 
that one. That's the one I want. I don't want maybe to one in twenty. It going down my throat. The other nineteen just fall and don't get back up. So there's they some laugh kind of again. Quint figures there's some kind of part of the festival where they're eating snakes. And you said it was right next to some skanky smelling this IPA. Giant cauldrons that are just brewing and simmering with this nasty foul smelling. So he, he's been by like a tannery and stuff that's pretty foul smelling, but this place is even worse. He's like, this is oh. worse. He just misty pa steps. The past hair on it. your nose is all curled up. And... Misty step past it or something, you know. Get around it. And uh, one of the ladies says, "Oh." you're gonna want that stew that one that smells like a dwarf's ass you you that's will you make that one special for visitors and then they all laugh again quint's got his helmet on <laughs> i know what you're they're, talking they're, about they no, they're <laughs> <laughs> they think it's hilarious every time they tell you something like this they're just cackling yeah, but he gets the side language too, you know, the, <laughs> the, because he's got the copperhead languages going on. Yep, yep. And uh, so that kind of thing is happening kind of all throughout the day until the afternoon, as it gets a little bit later into the day, maybe around two or three p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, everybody starts to gather at the the queen's hut, the queen's home, and. Uh, as the ceremony begins, Queen Thorgird walks in and takes her place on the throne. And she begins to recite a litany of the service of Rangrid. She talks about how Rangrid uh, was an exceptional Huldra of, uh, of exceptional valor and skill. Once she won a javelin throwing contest against all of the other Huldra, um, single-handedly scoring a, uh, a bullseye on every throw, rescuing one of the lost hunters from a pack of hungry wolves by herself, uh, slaying the entire pack and returning him safely to the Huldramos. Standing with her sisters to repel an attack by the dwarven readers and leading the pursuit with the enemy routed despite being injured. And at, at each exclamation that she makes about uh, Rangrid, all of the Holdra around cheer her name and they toss black flagons of ale in her honor. Everybody's getting drunk. Um, and uh, she turns to Sir Tegas and says, you offered your services yesterday. We would be honored to have you perform them. I'll go about the means of performing the ceremony. Um, first, uh, the blessing the the body to make sure it will not rise again as an undead, uh, and then go through the similar what, to what she was doing, uh, recounting what she has has done, the and double tap ritual he's doing the blade, uh, what Sif requires of her warriors, and it takes about an hour to go through that uh, as I'm going through the different rites and rituals and scribing the runes on the corpse and on and on around her you never recovered a corpse but you uh you can perform the entire ritual for, okay. for her memory right. that's yeah, right for her spirit absolutely um so you see there are quite a few uh tears in people's eyes around the room as you conduct this they haven't had a, a cleric perform this uh for them in, in quite some time um, at the end of your ceremony, the, uh, the assembled Huldra again cheer her name, and Thorgrid calls forth one of the captains of the Huldra. Yeah. She calls forth Hafrid, uh, who comes forward and introduces herself, and she bows to you, and she's... I understand that, that you have the blade and shield of my sister. Rangrid, I am Hafrid Iron Eyes, and I humbly and gratefully accept her sword and shield uh, from you. As the queen takes the sword and shield and hands it to her and 
tells her that these will be held in a place of honor in the armory until we find a worthy shield maiden to take them up in, in the defense of Haldramos. And the gray-eyed captain accepts the armaments with tears in her eyes and leaves the building. The queen then turns to you all and said, and now it is time for celebration. Come, it is time for the trials and tests. And all of the Huldra begin gathering up and they start going outside and you see people start setting up various uh, uh, contests and competitions. She says, uh, we would love for you to participate with us as our way of celebrating life and celebrating battle and our honored dead, we will be holding a variety of different trials, combat trials and tests of skill. We hope you will join us. First up is the test of archery, feast, feats of precision. Are any of you willing to participate in with us? Quint is. Quint likes the archery. Uh, yeah, I'll do it if I can borrow somebody's bow. I only have a crossbow. Is it allowed? Uh, yeah, Tyrion's never done it, but he's feeling lucky. So he, if they have a small enough bow for him, he's good, like maybe Absolutely. a child's bow. He he's gonna do it. <laughs> and Sir Tegas will do it as well. The range isn't particularly far. All right. Well, Blink doesn't want to feel left out, so Blink, <laughs> Blink will join too. Da, 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 da. He, he was actually distracted, uh, you know, like looking over at something else and just saw you guys wandering off and so just like went with you. All right. This is annoying me. Oh, There's a special cobalt tea, like in golf. Everybody else teas from back here, cobalt tea from up there. Yeah, that's fine. I, you know, I'll take any advantage I can get. All right, so let's go over the rules of the game. There are six other Huldra who are wanting to participate in the archery contest. And she says the, the rules are simple. Um, there is a target that is uh, in place, and everyone will get the opportunity to take three shots at the target and uh, you score points based on what AC you would hit. Okay. From a mechanics st uh, standpoint. So an AC of nine or, you know, a nine um, or lower, you automatically miss the target. If you hit an AC of 10, it's worth half a point. And then it goes up one point each until an AC of 20 is worth 10 points. So you get three shots. And uh, if there's a tie at the end of that, then you will uh, uh, move the targets further back. And then you will, the two that tied will take shots at disadvantage. And then whoever has the highest point total will win the archery shooting contest. So J jokes yeah. on them. Uh, we're outside, so I'm at disadvantage anyway. <laughs> No, we're going to set up a tent. We're going to shoot outside of the tent. The cloudy. And this initiative is purely for uh, what order you're going to go in. Uh, so, Quint, give us your three shots with the bow. Um, Sunlight sensitivity? Yeah, it is sunny. It's afternoon, and it's outside. Well, you know, if I'm going to have this advantage anyways, then I'm going to use Trick Shot. Okay. So give us three shots in a row. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Scroll up here, and... First shot. <laughs> that is a miss. Uh, you hear a chuckle from the Huldra around you. It's like, these arrows are... 
crooked or something. Uh, second shot. Huzzah! Ten points! Uh, no, that's a crit. I use bullseye. Trick, I use trick shot. Yeah, twenty or higher is a is a ten points. Oh, that's the maximum. Okay, I got it. Yeah, you. that's the maximum you can get. And that's a bullseye. And this is the well. If I get a bullseye, can you can you get two bullseyes? Is it? You can, but that was only worth one point. So eleven points for Quint. Huzzah! Uh, yeah, Quint's like, damn daylight. The mechanical man. So may I use a longbow, or should I use my crossbow? You can use a longbow, yeah. All right. You can feel free to add one to your inventory so you have one. Five points. Ten bullseye. Another bullseye, 25 points, and the current champion goes to customer support bot. Hmm. I always have to calibrate one. And I'm going to use her javelin as the thing, but it's going to be her bow attacks. Eight, three, and a miss for 11 points, tied with Quint. <laughs> tied for Quint for last, is what you're saying. That's what you're saying. All right. Uh, I changed my javelin to my dexterity, so it should be uh, accurate what it would be with a log long bow. Sure. Bullseye! Five points. And two points for a total of 17 to the little one. The mechanical man is still in the lead. All right, so I'm going to step up. Never really practiced with a bow much. But uh, he's going to give it a shot. Say a quick prayer. Bullseye! Seven points. And two for a total of 19. A worthy effort. Getting all kinds of errors. Two bullseyes and a miss for 20. Customer support bot. Customer support bot retains the lead. <laughs> That's my new name. I'm changing it. Computer name updated. Very nice. Ah, I'm getting that same stupid error with the cop fields because they're not on a map. Anyway, I can ignore that one, two, three. A smelly eye. That only rolled twice. As half a point. A bullseye and a miss for a total of only ten and a half points. Smelly <laughs> eye drops out. Jet black turquoise. Comes up with two misses and a 14 for only four points. She walks away very dejected at, uh, at her inability to hit anything. <laughs> uh, when Blink steps up the line he's like why is it so bright out here bullseye <laughs> nice
<laughs> Another bullseye. <laughs> Uh, and a two for 22. As the strangely brittle one scores one bullseye, a night nine points and four points for a total of 23. So customer support bot is still in the lead with one Huldra Maiden left. Two bullseyes and a 14 for a total of 24. As we declare the winner, customer support bot is the supreme archer in Huldramos today. Can I keep this longbow? <laughs> yes, you may. Ah, cool. Feel free. Uh, so I'm grab a fistful of arrows. A couple of them. Now, um, for our next event, we want only the strongest of you. Who of you would like to participate? For now. <laughs> We go, we go to the game known as the Crown of Kings. Ooh, I want that. I have a crown thing, if you haven't noticed, with my ringlet of blast. <laughs> well, like, Tarion's probably the strongest. By far. Oh, yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> as they announce the Crown of Kings, you see a whole bunch of people are rolling out these barrels and they stand them up and there are nine barrels stand one next to each other. And, uh, and then a bunch of people come in, they're carrying these huge boulders and they set one down in front of each barrel. And you notice that each one gets progressively larger than the pat than, than the previous one. Uh, and they describe to you that the, the first one is called the Ungberstein or the baby stone. And it is 100 pounds. The second is 150, and 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, until the Vin Maga or Boar Belly at 500 pounds. You have to have a certain minimum strength in order to even attempt the, the particular stone. And uh, the way we record it is you're going to make strength ath athletic checks and the DC starts at an 11 for the first stone and it'll go higher for each of the following stones um, by a little bit. And depending on how much above or below that check is, you'll add or remove um, a certain amount of time. Uh, the standard is three beats um, in order to get the stone on top of the pedestal. And if you uh, succeed by five or more, it lowers by one. If you succeed by 10 or more, it lowers by two for a minimum of one. And then if you fail by five or more, it adds one. If you fail by 10 or more, it adds two. And then it's whoever can do it in the shortest amount of time. The current winner is Hafrid, the lady who accepted the sword and shield from you. So who of you would like to compete in the test of strength the crown I'm, of kings. I'm feeling uh, a lot of hubris right now, so yes. Yes, me. <laughs> yeah, Tyrion's all in. <laughs> Even though he's at a disadvantage because he has to lift the boulder up over his head. <laughs> if it's in the sunlight, Coin's going to be like, no, I think I'll watch from over here. It's not an attack roll. It's, it's an athletics check. <laughs> so squinting won't matter. So maybe... You wouldn't have disadvantage. Yeah, then he'll, he'll do it. He'll do it. Oh. Yeah, you only <laughs> you only get a disadvantage on perception what, checks. What's the minimum strength though? Uh, it depends on however many you lift. Um, what's your strength? Sixteen. Good night, Christopher. Uh, so a sixteen will get you all but the last stone. What'll eleven get me? <laughs> 11 will get you up to the fifth stone. Oh, wow. Wow. All right. That's pretty good. The 
300 pound stone. Uh, oh, yeah. Blink wants to try it. Why not? All <laughs> so right. Awesome. Blink and, and Sir Tegas can work together because I have an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you can get an advantage on it. No, that would be fair. So, who wants to go first? Blink, you want to go first? Yeah. Yeah. Let me go first. All right. Just roll a series of. Uh, uh, you can only go up to five, so five athletics checks. And I'll record them here. All right, there's the first one. I mean, those aren't terrible. <laughs> All right, you failed on the first stone. You succeeded on the second and third. Um, but those were the only two that you completed. So let's see. Did you beat them by five or more? No. So those were three beats each for a total of six. I mean, Probably look like a toddler playing with bowling balls. Right? Blink, <laughs> Blink's just happy he got, got him up there at all. Take, take off, <laughs> I'm just happy you didn't get squished and like die. Exactly, end up with little legs sticking out from underneath Which the boulder. Is... <laughs> <laughs> All right, because so Quint goes over there and does his. What does he get? Six. You can do eight. Eight. All right, because you have a sixteen. Yep. Yeah. So that gets you up to the four hundred and fifty pound stone. One. Two, three. Nice. You're proficient in athletics. Wow. Four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Uh, so let's see. You succeeded that one by two or more. For the first stone, you get it up there without any trouble. For the second stone, you beat it by ten or more. So you are down to one. One beat. Extremely fast time. For the third stone, you also beat it by ten or more, which is one. And... For the fourth stone, you beat it, but uh, not by any particular margin. For the sixth, fifth stone, you beat it by 10 or more. So you have a very respectable time. Mm, you were built for manual labor. Yeah. <laughs> seventh stone, you or the sixth stone, you failed to lift. Uh, and for the seventh stone, 14, you... Did not get five or more. And for the final eighth stone that you were capable, you managed to do it in um, with uh, five over. So you got uh, two beats. So the, the current to beat is a stone number eight at two beats. It's whoever lifts the highest stone with the lowest beats is the winner. All right, who's next? Tyrion will go next. Oh, no, Sir Tegas. Yep. Only if he wants to participate. He doesn't have to participate in every event. No, he's not participating without eight strength. <laughs> you, you, you could get up to three. All right, Tyrion has. <laughs> like a suggestion on a, on a main and make her do it for me. Uh, Tyrion has an 18 strength. So you can go all the way. Oh no! <laughs> I thought I rolled, rolled the one! Yes! <laughs> one. Two. Easily toss that first one up there. Three. Four. Oh! Mm -hmm. Five. 
<laughs> nice. Ah, uh, how many were there? That was it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so you failed on the ninth stone, but you succeeded on all but the fourth. Um, so that was eighth stone was three beats. Seventh stone was also three beats. So your your highest is the eighth stone at three beats. Um, although you did fail on the fourth stone. Customer support bot, would you like to go? Yes, please. The current reigning champion is Half Reed, which was able to do the ninth stone in two beats. Oops. It's is going it, great. Is Quinn at eight stone at two beats? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Quint did really well uh, towards the end there. Awesome. I, I'm not sure if you, you get disqualified after your first failure, but it, it didn't say anything specific on that, so. And I'm gonna use my my inspiration on the last on the last stone I can lift. All right. This is an important thing to use it on. <laughs> it was actually, that your last one? It was actually yeah. a fumble. <laughs> so it helped a lot. No, that was only eight. Oh. Yeah, I only have a strength of sixteen. I thought they don't. Oh, 16. yep, you're right. You are right. Okay, very good. Uh, so you got a stone eight at two beats. So you have tied with Quint uh, as your highest. So the two of you have done exceptionally well and uh, are cheered on with much accolades and uh, toasted with lots of beer, which customer support bot can't drink. For the next event, everybody starts cheering, and uh, you notice they bring out the huge cauldrons and the cages with the snakes. And uh, they say, come, come. It is time for the, uh, <clears throat> the snake handling event. Do you wish to participate? Yes, I cannot be poisoned, so this is great. No, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, Tyrion's going to sit this one out, too. Just watch. <laughs> Is anybody but CSB going to participate? I don't know. Does it work if I cast Purify Food and Drink on them? Uh... I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't actually prepare that. So No, uh, I, I'm going to sit it out, too, I think. Take us? He must have stepped away for a second. All right, well, you see several of the Huldra come forward and uh, you look and you see that the uh, the snakes don't seem to be moving terribly quickly. Um, you think they might have been left outside and they're all kind of just tired and from the cold and torpor. Um, but a bunch of them come up and there is a Sif's holy symbol, a bound sheaf of arrows is painted on this platform within the roped area. And one of the old ladies ladles up a portion of this nasty smelling concoction from the cauldron into a shallow bowl and hands one to each of the contestants to drink. And then she begins chanting this rite. She says, Lady Sif, our patron and protector, bear witness to the bravery and dedication of those gathered here and bless them for their courage and commitment. May their acts find favor with you that you shield their bodies from the venom without and open their minds to the weird and wondrous properties of the elixir within. Fix your gaze upon them now. Smile upon the worthy, we pray. As, uh, as the invocation ends and the ritual finishes, each of them start chugging this nasty looking fluid. Um, 
and uh, as as they potion begins to to affect them, you see them kind of getting woozy and and their eyes go glazed over, and they're escorted over to this roped area where handlers start taking the snakes out and draping it. Oh, I forgot. Customer support bot, you you drink it, uh, Tegas? Are you drinking it? Are you participating? No. Okay. Uh, so only customer support bot um, participates, and he drinks, and it does absolutely nothing. <laughs> I look down at my bowl, confused, and then I'm also going to uh, take out a a, po a poison vial and drink that too, and that's going to do nothing. I mean, everybody's looking at you kind of funny um, as everyone else is kind of uh, woozy and, and dizzy and almost falling down. And then they escort you over to the, uh, the side cage and they start draping these uh, very poisonous snakes and they try to bite you and just break their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> as uh, a few of the other people you see, they, they get bit and they kind of freeze up a little bit and fall down and uh and go unconscious and uh as each one of them does that they kind of go into a, a fit and uh shake and wither and foam a little bit at the mouth as everyone around is cheering um physically you can see that they look terrible their eyelids are fluttering there's spit dripping out of their mouth and stuff um and it lasts for a little while as as they are apparently seeing something in this in this state um but after, after a few minutes, they start to come out and they take them over and uh, they're set to the side. World. Yeah, they were having a spirit vision. Spirit um, world. You see the size of that chicken? And uh, customer support bot, these snakes do absolutely nothing to you and you're bored again. Hmm. Does he like uh, gnaw on a snake? <laughs> Yeah, it's going to trigger a full Skynet thing. I'm just getting more and more <laughs> judgy about you fleshy beings. And uh, after another round of, uh, of contests that, they, that go through, they, there's an axe throwing contest. There's several people that are engaged in melee contests. And then they invite everybody into the Great Hall. And uh, as they're all sitting around feasting on these uh, cattle that have been roasted, and the, uh, the birds and things that were hunted, um, everyone begins talking and people will stand up and begin telling the hall their personal tales of cleverness and bravery, mighty deeds. One stands up and says, I am Braga Nine Fingers. Or not, I am not. Um, Braga Nine Fingers was one of the first Huldra, my great, great grandmother. She once faced and defeated a dozen dwarven reavers naked after the reavers surprised her bathing in the river. She was armed with nothing but a rock and her own braided hair that she wielded as a whip. And as they're passing it around, it, each of them looks to you and says, Have you something to boast of? Oh, yes. Please! <laughs> Hi, I'm Customer Support Bot uh, 23764. I'm just one of a bunch of support bots. I'm actually not that impressive among my kind. But today I went to your your feast, the Holter Feast, and I beat all of you at all but one of your contests easily. Um, yeah. Huzzah! <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and walk off the stage depressed. <laughs> hey, hey, Quint's going to... Um put on a little uh, shadow uh, trickery uh, using his misty step uh, ability into the shadows and out um, manipulating uh, the scene as he s tells a story he says at the southern fringes of the Imperium the border between Midgard and Shadow Realm has grown thin creating an area of hungry gloom as creatures enter this cavern their light sources are swallowed by the dark. The breath of breathing creatures turns to fog in the chill air. Worse, dripping stalactites tainted by shadow have created a pool of dark water several hundred feet across in the northern western corner of the cavern. 
Creatures who enter the frigid water risk being pulled beneath its surface and drowned by hungry spirits who haunt its depths. There is a hidden entrance to a shadow road it lies on the eastern side of the cavern. The shadow road leads to the city of Wormwood in the Shadow Realm, often used by the Black Prince and his entourage on visits to the Ghoul Imperium. In this dark corner of the underworld, the Shadow Fey build and watch tower of shiny black marble streaked with white, which stands four stories tall and is topped with a conical roof. Both the elegant tower and the road presided over by a Shadow Fey ambassador. Those wishing to use the Shadow Road to get to Wormwood and the Shadow Realm must be granted her permission. And he shadow fades out. Tis a great story! Tis a great story! Does anyone have anything else that they can boast of? Uh, Tyrion's gonna jump up just on top of the highest thing he can, and he's gonna say, I am Tyrion the Great Barbarian, and I saved a village from an ice giant by winning a arm wrestling contest against him. <laughs> Everybody jumps up. It just held you in its hand! Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> like, how does that work? Which finger of the giant did you wrestle? Uh, uh, one finger that was enough. <laughs> That's all I needed. Anyone else? Uh, Alright. Uh, so Blink stands up and he says, Once... I built a device, and this vi device, when I triggered it, I traveled through time. And there, when I arrived, I accidentally mated with my grandmother, and then I became my own grandfather. They all kind of looked at each other. Huzzah? <laughs> Huzzah? More me! Yes, more beer, more me! <laughs> So to, to take us will sort of, he stands up and, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> um, and he's, he's trying to unroll this little scroll that he had notes written on and can't really read. And um, we we rescued. Um, I mean, uh, we we found the missing. Holy robes of Sister Adeline. And, and you hear up. this gasp across the entire room as the queen stands up and looks at you. You wield the artifact of Saint Adeline? And he's, he's still not... He's still trying to focus on what he's doing. And, and it was me and, 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 and my friends... Huzzah! As the whole crowd just goes absolutely wild as you're holding that up. Um, he just awkwardly sits back it. down. <laughs> He's used to having the words imbued upon him by Sif and <laughs> not used to boasting about himself. Uh, public speaking's hard for him. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, the. The boasting goes on, and there's uh, many colorful and, and fun stories as, uh, as presented by all of these uh, various Holdra, and it goes late into the night. Um, at one point, the queen comes near you as, as everybody's eating and drinking and, and says, I would, I would like to hear the story of how you came by those holy robes. I have heard of them, but I never dreamed that I would see them. So now that he's passed having to stand up in front of everybody, um, he will tell the tale. I'll make sure that Custer Support Bot doesn't chime in about slaughtering the young girls and all the pleasure he, re he received from killing the young girls. 
we'll sort of wash over that real quickly. Excellent. And she's very impressed. Um, and so the, the evening goes. Uh, it's, the party is a wonderful success. Let me do some calendaring. Ah, so Caesar just redeemed a magical item for Blink because of his own grandpa. He deserves it. Nice. Excellent. So out of time, this magical item appears. Do you need the table? Oh, I can't give you the is table. It, I am not. The is table. it uh, table B? Yes. yes. I got it. All right. Let's see. A, a drift club. Nice. How Very many, nice. How many is that in the party? I think. <laughs> do I already have one? Or maybe I gave mine to Zarian. Yeah, I have one. <laughs> You just strap it to the cannon. I have one too. And then when the cannon winks out, <laughs> it floats away like a helium balloon. <laughs> just paint it red. All right. So the next day, after everybody's finally dragged themselves off the floor of the hall where they had passed out, um, at some point during the night, you had, uh, hold on. At some point during the night, you had mentioned that you didn't know where the Midnight Temple was, because I'm sure you would have mentioned that. Um, and uh, she says, the next day after uh, she meets with you, she says, my shield maidens, we are grateful for the arrival of these people. They have returned the arms of our fallen sister and joined us in honoring her memory. They have also sought us out for aid, and we can bring ourselves honor by giving them what they seek. They have proven themselves friends. Now let us see if they are allies worthy of the honor of fighting alongside the Huldra. My good guests, you have asked me for my aid, and I have tasked my diviners with fulfilling it. Now I ask you for yours. My scouts have located enemies nearby. Ragnarok cultists. Crazed creatures without honor that look to bring the end times upon us have set their eyes on Huldramos. They seek to do great mischief here. We will take the battle to them first so that our people and their livelihoods remain untouched. Will you go into battle with us? It will put me in your debt, and I shall repay that debt immediately upon your return. I will see that you have the resources and the warriors for your journey and your raid upon the Midnight Temple. Sounds I love like killing. a fair trade. Excellent. Can we travel at night? Uh, yeah, you can, you can, <laughs> the, the Huldra don't care whether they raid it in the daytime or nighttime as they all have dark vision. Um, so they're perfectly willing to, to fight at night. If you want to make it a nighttime raid, the, uh, the scouts have brought word of the location of the cultists. Let me show you on a map real quick. So oh, you perky. are here in Huldramos, and the cultist camp is kind of right down the river a little bit on the other side. How far of a, how long of a trip is it going to be? Uh, she says it'll take a few hours, but uh, it's, not, it's not a matter of days. It's just a matter of hours. It'll be a three or four hour journey, depending on how quickly you, uh, you march. Can we take the can we take boats? Would that be faster? At least getting getting there. Uh, you could get closer to it. Yeah, it, that's the the time was accounting for using boats. Because you you take the boats for a ways and then you'll get off on land and then head the rest of it the way in on land. <clears throat> she proposes that um, a small group of the Huldra maidens accompany you led by Hafrid Iron Eyes to take out these Ragnarok cultists. 
Do you have any other questions for her about him? Are the cultists undead? Yeah. Do they appear to be necromancers or wielders of magic or? Uh, the scouts reported back that the bulk of the cultists appear to be Fraugashar. Nasty little creatures. Um, they also reported that oh. there were a trio of reaver dwarves with them. Uh, do they have any abilities we should be aware of or prepare for? Those, like The one dude looks like he probably does cold stuff. He's blue. Is it cold or is it lightning? Uh, cold. They are um, primarily from further north. Uh, in the colder regions to the north towards Nordsheim, there is a large uh, range of mountains and uh, it is perpetually winter up there. The mm -hmm. Fraugashar are not individually terribly powerful. They are a type of winter fae. Um, they are, you know, they they run quickly across snow, but none of them are particular te particularly terribly strong. They normally bite or attack you with a dagger. They have no magical abilities. So this oh, is okay. Hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. That's what he looks like when he's on that image. He's, <laughs> he looks like he's dancing. And then finally, the scouts reported that uh, they saw an old woman with them. It looks like this. She seeing anyone? And uh, <laughs> they're not sure who she is they don't know if she's a cultist or a hag or or what but uh they did note that the area around her there was f always frost on the ground wherever they walked she's an ice witch <laughs> if you zoom in on her and crop out the uh candle flames that looks like she's got some marshmallows on a stick so less threatening well, maybe that's what she's got in the backpack is a bunch of marshmallow bags she's yeah she's just she's a s'more witch it's fine she's a s'more witch <clears throat> um io off to the witch hunt we go yeah time for killing there's one more thing i wish to bring to your attention oh. the real reason why the Ragnarok cultists are coming and we do ask that you keep this to yourselves so you understand the grave importance of what we are trying to accomplish and she asks you to follow her as she goes out behind the hall and begins walking into the marshlands um, out behind the Queen's Hall and uh, she leads you several hundred feet into the marsh. And you just see, I mean, it's kind of very thick, marshy land area. And she raises her hand. And you notice that on her finger is a silver ring with a single opal. And the opal shines for a moment. For a moment and the empty marshland in front of you begins to shimmer and fade. And in its place, you see a giant, absolutely massive tree. A giant tree appears where a small hill once stood in the center of the marsh. It stands at least 200 feet tall and supports a great gnarl of exposed branches at its base. No birds come or go from its inviting branches, and no beast stirs in the marsh by its roots. A wind stirs the leaves of the tree, a few falling and twirling in the breeze, yet the leaves do not reach the long grass beneath. In the midst of their slow spiral dance through the air, they simply fade from existence. The queen turns to you and says, behold, the two queens tree, Yes, this is a world tree sapling. One of the saplings of Yggdrasil. Until recently, no one aside from my sister queen and our household knew of its existence. 
It quickly outgrew the garden beside the hall, forcing us to rebuild the hall and expand who knew of its existence. The Huldra now protect not only Huldra knows, but this great secret as well. Erpa and I uphold an illusion over the tree to hide it from prying eyes, but soon it will be too large and powerful to be hidden by even our magic. And hide it we must to protect it. As a sapling, it is still vulnerable to too many evils in the world. And now these crazed wild folk, those who lust for Ragnarok, have somehow learned of our tree and think that by killing or corrupting it, they can hasten the end times. So long as my sister and I sit upon our thrones, all they will hasten is the time of their own deaths. This is why I need your aid. Protecting the continued life of this tree is just as important as finding and stopping your blood wedding. I beseech you, go forth with the Huldra and deal with the invaders, and we will lend you aid in your own quest to the Midnight Temple. I only ask that you say nothing of the World Tree to anyone once you leave this place, until such time as you hear tell of its existence from someone else on your travels. I would have your word on this. Bye. Yes, you have my word. Now, Quint, um, yes. when you were talking with the Shadow Fae and they told you about the Shadow Road, they mentioned it was near Wotan's tree. That is another tree of Yg Yggdrasil. Now, from a from a game perspective, Yggdrasil is the the world tree that supports the entire world. It, it travels through the entire world, and it is the bridgeway between all of the planes. And so, the that, that's why you felt this. Uh, strange sensation of plane traveling is because all planar travel um, ultimately goes through the power of the Yggdrasil or these world trees. And as uh, evil cultures try to take over them and corrupt them, that's what brings rise to the corrupted realms of the Eleven Hells and the other locations, other plane, evil planes. Uh, I'm going to mention the like uh, uneasy magic feeling that everybody gets around town. Is that from this and you hiding it? Yes. Oh. It it is purely from its existence. Uh, the the world tree is immensely powerful. When it is fully grown, um, it will imbue the entire land around it for miles with special magical power. As it is, all magic users who are who are near it have uh, basically they they upcast everything um so everything they cast is is at a higher level um, hmm. blink so cast is... detect magic now and see if uh, you can create a feedback loop <laughs> you blind yourself uh, so... now did you say in the description of it that did you say that it was um it looked dead and no trees, no and no life on it at all. No, there were no animals of any kind. Yeah, it had leaves no, and stuff. Yeah, it, the, it's a perfectly growing, healthy sapling, but there were no animals, you know, no birds in its in its branches or no animals down by its roots or anything like that. Everything was leaving it completely alone. The uh, the power coming out of it just keeps all of the the minor things away. So let's go ahead. And you guys wanted to do a nighttime raid on the cultists, correct? Quint, I think Blink probably would put their hands up and vote nighttime. Yes, please. Yeah, I have dark vision from Goggles at Night, so I'm fine with it. All right. So give me a second to get this part set up. And we're going to do I'm going to add a cohort to each of you. Who would like uh, Halfrid? I'll take Halfrid. Okay. 
You take half red. And you will have control of her. She has a strength of 18 and wields a magical long sword. And the rest of you get a Holdra Shield Maiden. Fancy stuff on there. What's that? Fancy stuff on the NPC sheet. Yeah. Wounds, temporary hit points. They got all kinds of nice, nice things. I'll draw for Tarion. So is this an extension? So all of your NPCs have death saves and stuff, or is it just particular ones? Uh, it's all of them, and then you can choose to use it or not. Customer support bot. All right, so they should all be on there. I don't know who owns which. <laughs> uh. That's a good, I don't know how to show that. Maybe when you put them on a map, we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. Um, so you guys approach, uh, they take with you, take you down to the area where known as the cultists uh, or where the cultists are uh, currently encamped. And they tell you that they, they appear to be gathered together on a hill and the scouts reported that the Fraugashar were very busily chopping down trees. They seem to be collecting a large pile of firewood. And the worry is that they want to use the firewood to burn down the world tree, the sapling. Uh, and uh, what's her name? Hafrid suggests that uh, the tactic that she would like to use is her and the shield maidens would approach from the north and you all would approach from the south and then catch them in the middle uh, and uh, and destroy them. Is that acceptable to everyone? She's quite we have a wand of fireworks track. if you need a signal. That works. Just give me one second to put everybody onto the map. I have one too many. How many javelins does she have? Uh, consider them to hold five each. Wow, cool. You can rename your shield maiden, and then you can tell which one it is. Yeah, go ahead and rename them. G give them a, a unique name so you know. Because I got one too many in here, and I, I'm not sure why. Mine's Lazy Nostril. All right, Lazy Nostril is good. Afrid we know is good. Anybody else rename theirs? Tall finger. Tall finger, all right. Uh, I've got hairy legs. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I just put in stupid hair. <laughs> stupid hair. All righty, perfect. And then that one we can use that one. Long left ear. I didn't mind. Half red iron eyes. <laughs> I 
Let's well, pronounce irony, yes. All right. Okay. Now we're done, and I can share the map. As you approach, this is going to take a minute because there's a lot of them. That's a good sign. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and have everybody roll initiative. Just so that you have a fresh initiative. I can't do anything yet. Still a little laggy. Give it a... Give it a, yeah, yeah it's a big it a, map. It is a, definitely a big map. And there are a lot of enemies. It'll be fine. Okay, has everybody got themselves situated? So let me describe what you see. As you approach, you see a bunch of these small little frogashar. Uh, as I said, they're cutting wood and stacking them up. In the center, on top of a, uh, this large hill, um, there is a concentric rings of standing stones and three reaver dwarves stand around a large bonfire uh, seeming like they're trying to keep the chill out um, but uh, the cold doesn't seem to, to affect anything else and uh, through the darkness you can see that there is a large patch of snow on the ground over on this western side of the hill Yes, in that range. Um, and you guys approach stealthily, so we're going to go ahead and get started um, with Sir Tegas. So I am trying to pull up the stream. I can see where we are, but I don't see any enemies at all. Um, or anything else. All I see is our tokens in uh, darkness. You, it's dark, so you don't have dark vision. They don't have any kind of lanterns or torches or anything. Only the only light source you know of is the campfire at the at the center there. None of them are carrying light sources of any kind. All right, so there is a campfire. What do I see in between? Uh, okay, now I can start seeing them, at least. Okay. Where are shield maidens, or do they come in later? They're they, up on top. All the way up here. At the very okay, sorry about the, that. The map. No problem. It's such a big map. Yeah, it, it is kind of a huge map, but I wanted to... Alright, so I'm going to uh, quietly... S okay, now I can see things. Okay, so it's a, it's a hinge. Yes. Makes me want to sing the Meaning of Stonehenge song. Um, all right, so I'm going to move. Uh, let me zoom in on myself. Uh, start with 35. I mean, start with my 35 feet. None of them, none of the enemies are aware of you yet. So, all right, so I'm going to cast Bless before I move. I'll upcast it. 
I lost the entire map as I because I zoomed in. All right, that's okay. I know what it was. Let me control get Tyrion. Thank you. Are we able to get cheat and do temporary hit points before we split up from the cannon? I mean, on my turn, I'll give you temporary hit points. Yeah, just try to stay within, like, yeah, 10 feet of the cannon, if you can. So I'm going to cast Bless. It didn't apply to myself. All right, so I'll do it to myself. All right, so I've already wasted a lot, enough time. I know you can ready either an action or a move action. Um, can I ready my move action, or does it take my action to ready an action? Can't hear you, Jen. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Uh, you, yeah, you can't ready a move. You can ready... You can ready either a move or, or a, an, an action. It's it's your action to ready. So what you're okay, ready is thought. a dash. All right, so that's all I'm going to do then, because I need these temporary points that I learned last time. Uh, I'm gonna, um, yeah, I'm gonna not get too far away. I'm gonna sneak up just a little and kind of wait, see what happens. Okay. All right, uh, nostril. I think she's gonna try to sneak up as far as she can, not kick things off yet. And she's going to ready an action that if things do get kicked off, she's going to immediately attack the nearest bad guy. Okay. Trying to avoid him for now, though. She smells something funny. Alfred. Well, I think she's going to uh, get things rolling here. She can't find out distance. He's massive. And she's going to chuck a javelin. Alrighty. Slams into the tree trunk next to where these, uh, these little things are chopping at it. As soon as she does that, Lazy Nostril would follow up. Okay. She's, a, she's a follower. She's not a leader, but she's a fast follower. Follow her, Captain. Missed. I put I put mine right next to the one where she did. I think the enemy is a tree trunk. Die tree trunk. So we have determined it is not a mimic. It is not a mimic. <laughs> uh, in the multi attack, just to clarify, it says to attack with their longsword and only for longsword. Yeah, that's longsword only. Single attack on javelins. So does that mean that his inner wear does have lines? What's that? Line-free outer wear, yeah. Only one brown one. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, so he's going to come running over, chattering, and uh, he pulls out a dagger as he's running. He sees two thuds and sees the javelins there. Uh, must be really the dwarves nice. are ignoring. We have to wrap these people of their clothing. <laughs> They're lice ridden tuft. That would be perfect for Blink. <laughs> he also runs out towards you. Stupid hair. All right. Stupid hair is going to get up in this as best she can. Oops. Why won't it let me move her? I thought she had a 30 movement. It's Yeah, it is 30. Oh, it, kept, it, it, it was being weird, but it looks like it's working now. Probably just a little lag. Oh, and Sven, I was wrong. The All of those extra hit point stuff on the NPC sheet is only for friendlies. Unfriendly NPCs, hostile ones, don't have all of that death save stuff. Okay. Because they don't, they don't get to make death saves. Well, there, there is one that would allow you to turn it on. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't, I don't there let used my... to be. I never, I never used. I it. generally never let NPCs make death saves. Uh, That's a PC yeah. thing only. <laughs> You're a cruel guy. It's bad enough. <laughs> yes. There's the, the the zombie getting back up thing, but it's automated yeah. now, so it's <laughs> it's great now, but. Uh, and she's gonna do the call, her call to arms and have her friends here uh, gain advantage on attack rolls until my next turn. Uh, so three of them. So how about uh, Iron Eyes and Lazy Nostril and Tall Finger? Okay. Uh, so you said Iron Eyes. Tall Finger. Find him in the combat tracker. Tall finger. Uh, they're hard to find. I was probably because yours is all sorted. If it was a mystery to you, all the PCs would be at the top. <laughs> oh, you said iron eyes. That's right. Yep. And lazy nostril, you said? Yes. They all have advantage. Uh, this one comes hopping over the trees. And yeah, he's going to run up to there since that's as close as he can get. Tall finger. She is taking the call and. Pulling out a javelin, and she's going to come running up to there, chucking her javelin, hopefully not at the same log. I know, it looks shifty. <laughs> log of javelin snatching. The, the log of javelin. And javelin with advantage. She hits. <laughs> One Shits for, indeed. For, for, uh, the least amount of damage she can do. Yeah. I blink. All right. Uh, blink will give out some temporary hit points. Oh, maybe. There we go. Uh, unfortunately, you can't reach everyone yet. Oh, um, Moogle Muffins, raining. What's up? Move the cannon up a little bit, and Blink will move up uh, right next to it. Okay. Now, Drake, we're past 11. Did you want to finish out this round? 
Uh, well, you're going to have to tell me that. Uh, it looks like there's like 100 people in the round, though. <laughs> there there just about is. There, there's a lot more left. <laughs> right. So we can call it for now. Did everybody and, uh, get a turn? Up. All the players? No, but I have I have five, so don't worry about it. <laughs> and I got a nine, so I'm all right next, next session. All right, so we'll wrap it up here then. All right, cool. Uh, so, uh, welcome, Moogle Muffins, raiding with your with yourself, I guess, uh, just a party of one. But but, anyways, welcome. Uh, we are gonna get out of here. But uh, what, what what's tonight? Tomorrow night. Uh, ooh, Lost Minds of Fandelver, uh, Saturday over on Rob Stream. So uh, that's at nine Eastern. I will be DMing over there. If you want to catch up with us over there, there's his information in chat. Tuesday, official first episode of Water Deep Under Siege, a totally homebrew, cool ass. I don't know. We're gonna make some shit up as we go. Stuff going on here in this in this campaign. That's Tuesday's brand new one. Brand new characters got art made up. Uh, and then uh, Friday is uh, Jungles of Cholt. Where we're gonna have a uh, another guest on, but that's it. Uh, rinse and repeat. Uh, so two weeks until we get back to this one, which might be when I'm out of town. I think it is. So I volunteer Valtrex to run my character. <laughs> if, if you guys came, I think cool. we will. All right, cool. I think we will. So uh, he snaps and shoots. You know. And uh, and that's it. So let's go see if we should go raid somebody. Uh, who's who's out there? Uh, I don't Stabs see anybody. And, and flies away. So we're we're done. That that makes it easy. So say say good night to everybody. We appreciate you hanging out and watching. If you're catching this on YouTube, uh, just say hello or something. Uh, but uh, talk to you guys later. Good night, everybody. Night.